So, Tristan, how do you pronounce your second name? Uh, Carillon, Carillon. That thing, uh, we'll uh, talk about <laughs> modeling with genie.jkl. Yeah, so, etc. And since uh, Sibir and Kretz imply the release into the atmosphere of uh, hazardous materials, um, atmospheric dispersion models uh, can be helpful um, by predicting the sorry, impacted area. The map. Ah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, atmospheric dispersion models can be helpful to uh, uh, to predict the impact in the impacted area uh, before the such a release. Um, so, since those models are supposed to be used in case of uh, emergency situations, we want them to be able to run fast and to run, to, uh, run them in the whole world and with a user-friendly interface uh, um, for such as people uh, who doesn't are expert in the field can run them anyway. And um, another thing is that uh, the input for such atmospheric dispersion models uh, are uh, the atmospheric uh, weather state. Um, <clears throat> so we need a fast access to global weather forecast data. So to tackle all of these challenges, it has been decided to uh, build a web application on the European weather cloud. Uh, so we are close to the meteorological data and we can have uh, fast access to global high quality weather forecasts. So the goal of the presentation is to uh, show you the technologies that have been chosen for uh, building this application and also to give some example of uh, how to use the API. Uh, but first I wanted to show you a small demo of uh, what the application looks like. So uh, that's one uh, flex part that you see here is one of the dispersion models that is implemented and you can see how it's possible to plot the, the results for uh, several uh, time steps. So what you see here is the uh, concentration values, the spatial distribution of the concentration values, uh, and it's really easy to plot them on an interactive map. So how uh, does all of this work? Um, the backbone of the application is um, the, open, uh, the, the RESTful API description that is following the open API specifications. So basically, uh, that, that is specif specifications that tells uh, what uh, HTTP request the API should answer, as well as the, re the format of the response uh, that it should have and the format of the request payload. Uh, it also provides a, a language uh, agnostic way of defining a data structure, so it's easy to communicate between the front end and the back end. The back end uh, so, uh, is, of course, implemented with Julia and more specifically, specifically with uh, the Genie uh, web framework. Uh, in the yellow bubbles, you can see all the most important dependencies uh, that are used uh, in, the, in the app. Fortunately, I won't have time to detail them. Um, so to translate the OpenAPI specification into Julia, we are using uh, openapi.gl. For the database, we are using Searchlight, uh, which is part of the of Genie as well. And for the graphical user interface, we are using uh, the Angular framework. So it makes to, to make a single page application, as you could see. Uh, we are using the G, the Leaflet JavaScript library for uh, handling the, the map features and uh, Open Smith, Open Street Map for the map tiles. So um, to show you how the, the API can be used, I decided I, I picked some uh, some example. Um, so uh, we will use the, try to use the API to read one of the FlexPart uh, output. So FlexPart is the dispersion model uh, that, that I talked to, that I talked about uh, earlier. So FlexPart provides its output as netcdf files, which are a, a file format, which is a file format to um, represent data cubes. So without going into the details, uh, the, the, this data format consists in layers or uh, also called variables that are defined on some dimensions uh, and you can also have metadata with it. So here, for example, uh, you have two layers, temperature and orography. 
that are uh, defined on uh, a set of the dimensions, so the longitude, latitude, and the time. In case of FlexPart output, uh, the file is much more furnished, but that's exactly the same principle. It's, it's always layers defined on some dimensions. So how to use the API to inspect and to read uh, those kind of data? Uh, the start is to look at the API documentation. So this has been generated with uh, swagui.gl, which is uh, part of the Genie ecosystem as well. So you can see that uh, if you make an HTTP request, a GET HTTP request uh, like this, you can get all the layers uh, or the variables that are available in some flex part output. So if we do that, so uh, here I'm sending the, the, the request to the API, and we can get on the, on the right, you can see that we get the uh, special layers uh, of the flex part output. The one we are interested in is the second one, spec001 underscore MR, MR, because it's the um, uh, mass concentration that, uh, that uh, the FlexPort model has, pre has predicted. So now that we get the layer, we want to have the dimensions uh, on which it is defined. Uh, so this another, it is another API call where we get uh, all the dimension names with uh, their values. Uh, so we have the height, the x, so that's the longitude. And if you would go below, you would have the time and the latitude. Uh, and then now that we know the dimension values that are available, we can uh, make another API call, uh, a post request this time, with the dimensions values that we are interested in. And so finally, we get uh, this GeoJSON uh, response. So I won't go into, into details, but basically, uh, it gives a, a series of polygons representing the grid cell um, and uh, the, prop, the val properties, which is the value of the concentration on each grid cell. And you can also have the, the outputs as a GOT file. Um, as in the example that I show you, the demo, it's actually what's happening. Uh, the backend sent a GOT file and it's, uh, it's uh, plotted on the map with a leaflet. So yeah, uh, that's it. I would have a lot more to tell about the application, but I don't have time. Um, all, all the code is open source, so you can go on this uh, GitHub repo and you can see a little bit more uh, uh, the code and how uh, Julia was used uh, yeah, more precisely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we have time for a couple of questions for Tristan. Uh, so is it easy to get access to all of this like uh, type of weather data and integrate that into Julia? Well, no. <laughs> That's why, uh, no, actually, it's, uh, you have to pay for this data. Since uh, it's a collaboration with ECMWF, yeah. which is the institute producing this weather data, uh, I have access to them, but no, definitely uh, it's uh, not easy to have access. That's why you can install the application, you can actually run it, but it won't function well because you won't have those uh, weather data. Um, it's also possible to have, that there are some data sets that are public in CMWF. Uh, I, I could add some way of saying that we want to use public data sets, but uh, yeah, that's something that would be possible. But, uh, Thank you. Oh, sorry. Did the UI in Angular? Yeah. Is there any specific reason why you chose this instead of <laughs> React or Vue? Or the... Yeah, uh, actually, I, I was not, uh, I'm not, still not, not an expert in web development. So uh, I struggled, yeah, I had to choose at first uh, front end framework. And Angular is known to be quite opinionated. So that means that you don't have to take too much decision yourselves about how to structure things. So. I like the idea because I don't have I, I didn't have experience. Uh, if I had to do it again, I don't know if I would choose uh, Angular again. I know that there is Velt now that uh, that is gaining a, a lot of popularity, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Mm, I have a question. Uh, is Genie good for working with observation data like raster data? Yeah, actually uh, all. Didn't have time to, to specify, but 
uh, behind all these API requests that I was showing, uh, I'm using rasters.gl to read, to, so that to uh, abstract the netcdf file and to read the layers, and that's rasters, we, which is doing all the thing. So it was, so yeah, Julia was definitely uh, definitely a right, uh, right choice for that kind of uh, application because of rasters and uh, all the geospatial uh, data uh, packages that are existing. Yeah. Try to use, uh, for example, Sentinel 5P data for these version models. Uh, with uh, Sentinel 5P data, it's from the Copernicus program. Okay, and uh, these are weather forecast data. Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, uh, the satellite. Uh, well, uh, for face part, it only works with ECMWF data. Also with WRF data, which is the American Institute, I think. But, but it, it, it doesn't work with any type of weather data because it's kind of complex. You have a lot of uh, fields that are needed for the dispersion model to run. But I, I intend to implement other dispersion model, more uh, uh, less complex dispersion model, which, is, which are called Gaussian dispersion model. And maybe with those ones, I could use any type of weather data. <clears throat> yeah. Like, uh, do you also have the sniffle.jl, uh, but like, have you considered just using the sniffle? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The thing is that uh, from what I've seen, uh, so sniffle is nice for uh, kind of standard data driven uh, web application. Here, there is, it's not really suited because first you have this map uh, that I don't know exactly how to handle with steeple. We have a lot of forms. Uh, I, I couldn't show all the apps, but there is much more. And you have, so yeah, it, it wasn't, it, I felt like it wasn't really suited for this case. Uh, <clears throat> and you have authentication, uh, yeah. Can you support with steeple? Sorry? We, we have map support with steeple. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we do with Bloodly maps. And also, you can think we can do map box as well. With an uh, interactive leaflet map? Or yeah, yeah, I have, we have a demo of an interactive map where you can pop around through uh, points of city for the traveling assessment problem. And uh, was it existing three years ago? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Okay. That's why I'm not saying it's But no, that's, that's good to know. The problem that, that need, the code base is too large to go back to Steeple, I think. But uh, yeah, that's nice. Okay, do we have any final question? Uh, if not, we'll thank Tristan again. Thank you very much.